Today's video is a fun collaboration called What Month Is It? We were supposed to create something that represents February. And when most people think of February, they think of Valentine's Day, but there's more to February than that. The flower for February is the violet and the birthstone is amethyst. And so I decided to do crafts with a purple theme. I can't wait to show y'all what I made. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I'm starting off this project using lavender paint from Folk Art on this house that I bought on clearance from Hobby Lobby. The painting is going fine, but I should have sanded down the front of the house before painting. Because I don't know if you can tell or not, but I can see and I can feel where the flowers were painted on before. So I flipped it over, I removed the stickers, and I painted the back. I had this floral fabric that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was just some extra fabric from another project, so I decided, with Sox's help, to cut out the shape of the house. I thought this would be a good solution to cover up the flowers that were there before that I forgot to sand down. So I'm just trying to get things even so it would fit well, and I'm adjusting it here and there, and I'm using a very thin layer of Mod Podge to adhere it. The wooden house had a wreath of flowers on it before, so I thought this circle wreath rub on transfer that I got from Dollar Tree would look nice as well. After cutting it out, I removed the transfer sheet and placed it on the house. And then I took the scraper tool, which is actually a Pampered Chef scraper tool, but um, I used that to transfer it on. I cut out a decal with my Cricut that said family and I added that underneath the wreath. And you could just as easily use stickers to write out something or freehand it or even trace on the letters. This turned out so beautiful and it's so easy to make. It would look great on a tear tray or as part of, part of a vignette on a table or a bookshelf or something like that. As I mentioned earlier, this video is part of a playlist hosted by Tammy from Happiness Created and co-hosted by Teresa from Teresa B DIY and LaParsha from Creating It Myself. Special guest host is Lini from Crafty Lini and links to the playlist and all of their channels will be listed below. I decided I wanted to try and create my own crate and I take a wood plank from Dollar Tree and some giant popsicle sticks or craft sticks that I got from Lowe's and cut them down to size of the sides of the wood plank. I then put a thin line of hot glue and started gluing the craft sticks in place. And I repeated the steps all the way around with Captain's help. I then take tower tumbling blocks and put one in each corner of the crate for added stability. And then add another craft stick to make it look like the slats of a crate. And I just repeat the process all around the crate. I'm using a foam brush that you can get from Dollar Tree to give the outside of the crate a coat of white folk art paint. And y'all know, I like to give my projects a little bit of character, so I'm gonna dry brush on some of this folk art chalk paint in the color Barcelona Beige. I add some paint to my chippy brush, and by chippy brush, I just mean a really coarse bristled brush. Anyways, I just dip my brush into the paint and then I kind of dab it on something else. And I typically use an extra canvas to get rid of most of the paint. And then I try to lightly go over whatever I'm dry brushing. And dry brushing is not an exact science. And I felt it was a little dark in some places and I was a little heavy handed in some spots. So I just go back over it with the white paint. And we are in the home stretch of this DIY. I'm hot gluing down the glass jars, which are actually vintage spice containers to hold them in place. I'm not looking for a permanent hold or anything like that, just to keep them from wiggling around too much. 
and then I add some crumpled paper on each side as a base to put the reindeer moss on top of. And I'm adding hot glue here and there to keep it from just like falling out. And I do that on the other side as well. Hot gluing to keep down the mess of the moss, as much as I can anyway. Now I just add some floral picks from Dollar Tree to finish it off. I really think this turned out so beautiful and it's versatile too. You could totally change it out for the seasons and I just really love how it turned out. For DIY number three, I've got Captain's Help and I'm using this wood frame from Dollar Tree canvas as the frame for the sign. It was crooked though, so I got another canvas from my stash and removed the canvas. I keep those canvases to use with my paint. And I'm hot gluing. I'm using hot glue to glue down these giant popsicle sticks or craft sticks that I got from Lowe's. You can get a good size pack for less than a dollar there, so I just glued them down one by one. and I stain the outside of the frame with Waverly Wax in the color antique and I wipe off the excess with a wet rag. Some people use like baby wipes, but I use wet rag. And I paint the sign, the craft sticks part of it, white. And I don't tape it off, but I just try to be careful as I paint around the edges. paint this little piece of wood purple. I used one of those planks from the Dollar Tree and just cut it down to the size that I wanted. I cut out a decal using my Cricut that said spring and attached it to the small piece of wood. And I took my little, I'm, I'm not even sure what this is called, but I dip it lightly in the white paint and make little dots around each corner of the sign, just kind of for like an added embellishment. I add some greenery to the top with some hot glue. And I added two simple shoestring bows, one on top of each other in the center of the greenery. And this is how it turned out. It's really so cute and I just love it. I just, I love that pop of purple. It looks so pretty. This is the last DIY y'all. I love doing wood round signs for my front door and I made this just in time to change from my Valentine decor to spring decor for my door. I started off by applying way, like way too much Waverly Wax in the color antique. So I take a damp rag and I wipe it on and also try to wipe off all the excess with the rag. For this next part, I'm applying painter's tape and then painting on a lavender color to add some lines to the sign. I don't have a specific design in mind or anything like that. I just wanted to add some interest to the sign. So I added some lines on the left side and then I also added some lines across the bottom. Again, I used my Cricut to cut out a decal that says hello. And honestly though, as I've mentioned before, you really could just use like stickers or freehand it or trace it on, just whatever your preference is and using whatever you have on hand. I had made a very simple burlap bow and glued it to the top of the sign. And then I took some floors that I got from Dollar Tree and put them on each side of the bow. And I probably should have added some greenery, but I was really trying to keep it simple. And this is how it turned out. I love it. And it's already hanging on my front door. And if you love to DIY and love budget friendly decor ideas, then you need to subscribe to my channel. I share new ideas every week to give you inspiration. You can also check out my Instagram. The link is going to be below. And my friend Sarah from Jujube DIY and I run a Facebook group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. Join us there and share the projects that you're working on. And thanks y'all so much for being here. If you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Great House. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye!